Hello guys, I'm welcome to my new video and today we're looking at how to help your healer but with a different spin. How to help your healer as a DPS or a tank. And a lot of times when I'm streaming, I'm thinking out loud. I'm thinking about how each of the players around me could help me. And honestly, a lot of people have pointed out that these could be or could make a nice video or could provide new players especially because a lot of these are basic to some extent but if you're a new player looking to step into a, into the DPS role, into the tanking role, and you're looking to help your healer, you might find some of these useful. And we're going to be covering basics. Again, we're going to start from the very, very basics. And some people are going to find this really boring. Some people are going to find it interesting. We're going to look at things like Prideful. How to help your healer with Prideful. And also we'll be looking at some dungeon-specific things or possibly my pet peeves where I see a lot of people not utilizing their classes or optimizing boss mechanics and again we're, go we're going to be covering certain dungeons now so let's go and get started with just the basics so first of all the most basic thing you can ever do as a dps or a tank is to have a healing potion and that involves spiritual healing potion and i don't know what it is but a lot of times when running poke situations and this is looking at pokes mainly because in poke situations you should definitely get that spiritual healing potion a lot of people don't have it a lot of people die without using it it is a five minute cooldown, but it does not put your invisibility potion on cooldown. It does not put your DPS potions on cooldown. So you're free to use it without losing any throughput or without being like, oh crap, I cannot use my invis potion because we're going to do a skip in Halls of Atonement. Don't worry about this. Please use this, put it on a nice key bind and get used to it because it's going to save your life both in raids and mythic and you should definitely get it. Now the second part is going to cover more melee DPS and that is all about the frontals. Probably one of the biggest issues that I've seen in puck situations is melee dying to frontals or not aware of the frontals and taking a big chunks of damage. And the biggest dungeons for this are Halls of Atonement and Necrotic Wake. You could to some extent say Sanguine Death, the first part can be really annoying and things like that. But honestly, Halls of Atonement, there's so many mechanics there. Necrotic Wake, the big dudes really chunk you and almost one shot you in higher keys or specifically fortified keys. How do you deal with this? First of all, if you die once, learn from the mistakes. And I'm also going to be linking a weak word that's going to make crazy loud sounds when there's a frontal approaching. It is not from me. It is from a very popular uh, streamer and key pusher, Elsimir, who plays a Holy Paladin. And if you play a Holy Paladin, you really need to know those frontals. So this weak word I found to be really useful. I'm not particularly using it right now because I'm playing my Shaman. But if I were to really push keys with... Uh, Holy Paladin, I think it's going to be very, very much needed because when everything kind of goes wrong and you need to be aware of the frontals, especially if you're running with something like a balanced druid who has trees or shaman with earth elemental and if they taunt a mob and frontal is coming, you need to be on point. You really need to be on point and it can get really awkward. So definitely one of the things to work on. And the last point is going to be towards tanks. And this is extremely basic and I know it's going to sound ridiculous, but let healers drink. I know this is uh, on paper, very, very basic, but a lot of the times the way to optimize this is not so obvious. So if you're a tank, you kind of want to give or reset after each trash mob, depending. If you're chain pulling and your group is fine, like for example, if you're running like Assassination Rogue, they probably will want reset. So they want to have at least one global where you're not in combat. In the same way, healers are they can operate in that way because if you get one free global cooldown or one global where you're not in combat you can press drink if you press drink you can keep drinking until or unless the trash mob is gonna target you or there's going to be like a group-wide aoe like prideful prideful you cannot drink you can only drink the first couple of seconds before it's gonna spawn but once you're drinking you're gonna be taken out of that state because prideful applies a group-wide buff but majority of the trash packs don't do that so all you need is one free global where you can drink and you can stay in the back, keep drinking while the tank or the DPS deal with the trash back ahead. It's not that big of a deal right now with Prideful because it's going to give you a lot of mana back as a healer. But if you have weeks with Spiteful, this is going to have a lot of issues, especially with Spiteful and Grievous, which we had a couple of weeks back. This caused a lot of healers issues because the way the Spiteful works is that once you kill a mob, Spiteful mob is going to spawn and it's going to target a member and a member for around 10 seconds or so. Keep in mind, if you're a healer, if you heal that person, you're also going to get taken into combat. So all of a sudden, after every trash bag for around 10 seconds or so, you cannot drink. 
a tank might think, oh, hey, I'm already giving you 10 seconds. Why aren't you drinking? What's going on? This can cause extreme issues on spiteful and grievous weeks, making it one of the hardest affixes for healers who have mana issues. So be aware of that or be aware of that combo when doing those keys. Give your healers more of a leeway in terms of getting that mana back. And this, this is going to cover the basic section. So now we're going to move into the prideful section and how to deal with prideful and some of the unwritten rules. If you've been playing in Shadowlands for a long time, you probably know how to deal with prideful or what is expected of you. Because a lot of the times in cook situations and especially really high keys, there's some unwritten rules in terms of if you get the debuff that's going to shoot out the arrows out of you. You don't move you let everyone else move around you and it's their responsibility to not get hit you as a person with the debuff stand still a lot of the times this is going to be applied for all keys keep in mind sometimes it doesn't work if you have things like quaking or maybe there's already mobs during prideful and some of the mobs do like frontals and you need to move away so it can not change but the general unwritten rule you get it you don't move you let everyone else move around it i feel there are some exceptions to this rule when it comes to healers because you have to remember that there is a lot of stress on healers during pridefall and healers like for example druid or holy priest who have like divine him and tranquility they cannot move during the cast so if you see druid casting tranquility and if you have the debuff on yourself and you know it's going to hit them move around or make sure that it doesn't hit them because it is or a lot of the times prideful can be considered to be a healer affix don't get me wrong a DPS popping the cooldowns is going to save it, but healers are going to be under stress. In the same way that Holy Priest using Divine Hymn, they have to stand still, they have to cast it. Divine Hymn is going to give them a huge healing increase boost if they get to cast a full Divine Hymn. So it's also very important for them to make sure that they're uninterrupted. I also have to say that being stacked around Priorful is probably going to be the best way to optimize your healer's throughput because a lot of healers benefit from being stacked. So, for example, if you're playing with Rest of Shaman, stand in healing range. There's a reason why Rest of Shaman might go into melee. They need to stand in healing range. Everyone needs to stand in healing range. They might actually sacrifice and get a potency conjure called Heavy Rainfall that's going to increase. And this is based on your 3-minute cooldown if they use healing time. It's going to increase their healing range healing by a ton. And if you're not standing in that, it can really make your healer quite unhappy. In the same way that Wrestle Juice are going to be using Efflorescence, and if they're using Efflorescence, they might be using Spring Blossoms. It's going to give you an additional heart that's going to work with Mastery. So stand in the green-blue things if you can. You'll notice that Holy Priest might be using Holy World Sanctify. It requires people to be stacked. You might notice this Priest using Barrier, which is extremely strong when you're dealing with these really high Pridefuls. And you have to remember, Paladin Mastery, it does more healing if people are close to you. So all of a sudden, stacking around Prideful, making sure you're not like miles away all by yourself, is probably the best way to do in all situations, including pokes and things like that. So keep that in mind. And now we're going to finish off video with some dungeon-specific tips and tricks that you can do as a DPS or a tank. Keep in mind, it's not going to cover all the dungeons. It's a very small portion. I don't want the video to be too long. But if you enjoy it, and if you want to see more of these tricks for other dungeons, Leave a comment below, like the video, and I might consider making a future video if I feel there's going to be enough demand. So let's go and get started with Halls of Atonement. And this is probably the biggest pet peeve dungeon, in my honest opinion, because there's so many different ways to optimize this. And a lot of the DPS, particularly DPS, they can decurse. So we're looking at you, mages. We're looking at you, boomkins, or druids, mages, shamans in particular. So those classes can remove curses and there is a lot of curses in Halls of Atonement that can help out a healer. So first of all, we're going to be talking about the shards and those shard mobs are going to be surrounded by the Prave Collectors. The Prave Collectors are going to be casting an ability called Siphon Life that is going to be a magic debuff and it's going to take a lot of damage on that person. But they're also going to be surrounded by mobs that are going to be casting Curse of Obliteration that again, you're going to see at some point curses flying around and magic debuffs flying around so what is the priority and the reason why i mentioned at the start of the video at the start of the section is that there's going to be a lot of druids there's going to be a lot of mages there's going to be a lot of shamans in the group or in terms of dps dealers because they're the meta and they can all dispel curses and a lot of the times in book situations the way you, you want to handle this and this does not happen a lot of the times but if it does it's great and if you're watching this video as a dps especially like a druid mage or shaman be aware of this if there is a curse to be dispelled dispel it because the healer needs to prioritize on siphon life what happens a lot of the times that causes deaths during this trash is that a healer is going to for example a healer that can dispel curses like a druid or a shaman they might dispel curse of obliteration on a member 
and the next second there's going to be siphon life on someone else siphon life is gonna take extremely hard especially on fortified weeks and that person is probably gonna die unless you're gonna focus all of your healing onto them it's going to be really really rough the way you want to do it every dps that can do it dispels curses and a healer just focuses on siphon life so this means that a healer sometimes has to be like okay there is a curse but i'm not gonna dispel it i'm gonna let the shaman do it i'm gonna let the shaman do it i'm not gonna dispel it i'm not gonna dispel it and uh, you kind of have to put some trust in it and that is honestly the best way to deal with it if you trust your group another thing that i see a lot is showing the second boss in Hanzo at home and there's going to be a group wide curse and that's right a group wide curse that's going to be applied and then you're going to be stunned after a couple of seconds there is so many times where a group with a boomkin with a mage and they have no idea you can actually dispel yourself or anybody else and help them survive the boss mechanic, optimize your DPS, or help your healer. So this is very, very, very important. The way I deal with this is that I do have a weak order that tells me a certain person that's going to get this kind of jump on them. The person needs to be dispelled. If they get dispelled, they can also avoid the jump if they're a mobile class. If you avoid the jump, you don't get a bleed effect. Now, if you're playing a class that you feel is not fast enough or whatever, a lot of times I'll dispel myself. If I dispel myself, I can heal the person who gets the bleed because right after the jump, you get this dot. And on Tyrannical Weeks, it's really, really painful. Couple of ticks and you're dead. So you need to make sure that either a healer gets the spell or the person that has the jump on them. If you're a mage, boomkin, or shaman, and if you don't have a weak or that tells you who has the jump on them, I would probably always dispel the healer in order to help them to heal the debuff. If you don't have any decurses during this boss, you might have some trouble, but you can use Kyrie and File to remove it. You can also, I have heard that if you have Ultimate Form and that is Necro Lord Soulbind, and if you're casting your Fleshcraft, you can avoid it as well, but I have not been able to test it myself. I have heard it works. Ultimate Form can actually be used in a lot of different ways to bypass a lot of these kind of mechanics, so you can make use or optimize this fight. Just make sure to use your decurs make sure to keep buying it because there's been far too many mages far too many boomkins that literally did nothing in terms of mitigating this mechanic that can really really help you out so let's finish up also automat let's go to the last boss i know a lot of you know the tactic where you can soak multiple beams as a single person maybe use an immunity but i'm not sure how many of you knew and myself included i've made aware of this very recently if you soak multiple beams and you can soak two as one person, you used to be able to do four, but now it got fixed. So if you soak two beams, you're only taking damage if, as if you were soaking one. So all you need is two people who are going to position themselves in between the two pillars and they're going to be taking all of the damage. So that means two people taking the damage as if they were soaking two beams, but they're actually soaking four. This kind of min-maxing means that the healer only has to focus on two targets. And honestly, it can really, really help you out in really high keys. I was only made aware of this very recently. So I have not applied this to many of my runs yet. And really quickly, I want to cover Plaguefall in terms of how to manage the last boss. Now, I know a lot of people know that if you have a disease to spell, last boss becomes substantially easier because there's a lot of diseases in Plaguefall. And the last boss, there is a disease mechanic that's going to apply four stacks depending on the DPS of the group. So if you're running a priest, monk, or a paladin, you can negate a lot of that damage. Now, it's going to apply stacks in like a one second interval type of deal. So if you see a diseased uh, debuff, you don't want to dispel it straight away. You want to make sure that you get the four stacks and then you kind of check out which type of uh, player is really low and then dispel all the, all the stacks at once. And this is going to provide, again, it's gonna help out the healer the most and this is one way of optimizing plague fall this spells again using defensives i don't want to have a separate section for just using defenses but using your defensives using health potions using your dispels using the abilities that are available to your class are going to provide the most optimal experience in a dungeon and it's gonna help out your healer a lot even situations where you're going to lose a bit of dps to the spell or something like that it is better to, you know, you have to help your party to survive. You have to help your healer because that's going to time the key. So this is my general video in terms of how to help out your healer. If you want to see more of these videos when I'm covering different dungeons and things like that, let me know in the comments, guys, and I'll see you in my next video.